Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the March 4th meeting of the Committee on City Services. I am City Councilor Stan Moulton and as chair, I will be presiding at this meeting, which is being audio and video recorded. Laura, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Councilor Moulton. Here. Councilor Labarge. Here. Councilor Dubbs. Here. And Councilor Rothenberg. Is she muted? Councilor Rothenberg, are you trying to unmute? Did you hear me say here? I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay. We are all here. Uh, is there anyone who uh, would like to offer any general public comment? I don't see anyone. So we have minutes uh, from the February 5th meeting. And uh, those were sent yesterday. Did everyone get a chance to review those minutes? I read them. I did not see those. <laughs> OK. Um, Councilor Dubs, did you see those? I did, yes. OK. All right, I have one. Uh, addition uh, that I would offer is an amendment. It is on page five. It is the first paragraph uh, describing David Ames. Uh, the sentence reads, he almost thought about running for Ward 2 and even took out papers. The word city council needs to be inserted there after Ward 2. So I would offer that as an amendment make that motion as that amendment uh, okay so you, uh, all right i will second that any discussion on that amendment laura roll call say, now that you mentioned what's in that document i did see that document but no discussion oh, on the amendment okay. thank you uh laura roll call on the amendment please okay. councillor moulton yes um councillor labarge yes councillor dubs yes and councillor rothenberg yes Okay, so we are now considering the amended minutes. Does anyone have any further changes, deletions, or additions? Hearing none, then Laura, roll call on the minutes, please. As amended. I think we need another, we need another motion. Oh. Yes. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Okay, um, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. And Councillor Moulton. Yes. Okay, the minutes of February 5th have been approved unanimously. <laughs> okay, items referred to the committee. We have two appointments uh, that are now before us. Uh, Jamila Gore to the Human Rights Commission. Uh, that fills a vacancy. And uh, Michael Curtin to the Historical Commission, also uh, filling a vacancy. Those Both those appointments, if confirmed, would start immediately. So uh, uh, I would like to have a volunteer to interview uh, Jamila Gore about serving on the Human Rights Commission. Councilor Dubs, that would be great. Uh, and a volunteer to interview Michael Curtin about the um, Historical Commission. Council Rothenberg, thank you very much. Now, um, if nobody minds, I'm going to move up now the uh, setting a date, if we can, for a special meeting. I'd like to get these recommendations to the full council on uh, March 21st, if we can set a special meeting and if Councillor Dubs and Rothenberg think they can get the interviews done by the time of that special meeting, which will be no sooner than two weeks from now, I think we can accomplish this. Uh, so does anybody mind if we discuss the possibility of a special meeting now? Sounds good to I, me. Okay. I don't so, mind 
the timeline. I don't have my calendar in front of me here, but um, I'll try to move around. If it's a conflict, I'll try to accommodate everyone else. Well, I'm gonna. I'm. Gonna, I have two ideas as possibilities, both piggybacking on other meetings that either all of us will be at or uh, councillors Dubs and Rothenberg would be at. One would be prior to the community services committee meeting that would normally be held on the third Monday if there is to be a meeting this month, which is March 18th. And that committee normally meets at 5.30, is that correct? Yep. So if we could meet that day at 4.30, that would be one possibility that would accommodate Councillor Dubs, Rothenberg, as well as Laura. Alternatively, I would suggest a meeting an hour before the city council starts on March 21st, which would allow all of us to piggyback on that meeting. Council Barge. Yes, um, I would have a problem on the 21st of March at 4.30. I'm clear on the 18th at any time that accommodates everybody. Okay. On that 18th. On the okay. Monday. All right. Councilors Dubs and Rothenberg, do you think, I anticipate um, that it would take no more than half an hour for us to deal with the reports on these two candidates. Uh, so my question is twofold. One, do you think you can get the interviews done in the next two weeks? And secondly, does a 430 meeting preceding your community uh, resources meeting um, make sense? It should. Um Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it should make sense. Like I said, I don't have my calendar. Um, I'll try to make that work. I will make that work. And the timeline is fine. The The short date for interviews is fine. Um, yes, um, that also works for me, too. I think I should have no problem getting the interview done by then. Okay. Um, and I guess I would suggest that we have a virtual meeting at 4.30. I know the community resources normally uh, meets in person, but I think if we plan a meeting between 4.30 and 5, that would still leave the two, uh, two of you time to get, if you're gonna go to city council chambers to get there. Does that all make sense? Yep, it works okay. for me. Okay, so why don't we say then that we will plan a special meeting at 4.30 March, 18th virtual meeting to deal with recommendations on Jamila Gore and Michael Curtin. Okay. That uh, is consistent with my goal of trying to expedite these uh, appointments so that they, once, once the candidates are in the pipeline, we uh, work as quickly as we can and as efficiently as we can to get them uh, to the full council for uh, approval, if that's our recommendation. Okay. All right, next on the agenda, I wanted to uh, discuss uh, a bit, Charter Section 2.7, Access to Information, which pertains uh, to our, our role. And Council Labarge, you actually asked that this be put on the agenda. So do you wanna address this first? On um, which one? Uh, Charter section 2.7, access to information. Yes. You want me to read it off? Um, well, I don't think you need to read it. I just, I, I would ask you for your, I mean, you have served on city services for, a long uh, time. for many years, and I just want you to offer your perspective on how this section of the charter works pertaining to our task well i have to say we have been following it all the chairs karen foster was our last chair and we followed that it had worked very very successfully without any problems one one thing i wanted to bring up was like reappointments and yep. my colleagues here was that the reappointments automatically, the same thing like the mayor with somebody applying to be on a committee, a board, or a commission, 
they still talk with that reappointment re applicant, okay? Then it comes to us. We never had to go ahead and interview them on a reappointment. And I can say to my colleagues, you can talk with all the previous chairs on that. We never had to do that because it was well taken care of in the mayor's office and sent to us on that reappointment. What we would do was just go ahead and move it forward with a full recommendation to city council. Another question I have too is, which I find is very, very important for anybody on city service, is that we have Laura now, who, which I think is a great idea of getting a hold of the directors of departments or either the, the commissions or the boards or whatever here in regards of asking their opinion about the applicant, which I think is very, very valuable here. But one thing I think is important to know for all of us here on city service, because we did run into a problem way back, Laura, you are not even here. And I use it as an example. And it was when they had the planning board at the DPW at that time, their own commission there, apparently I had made a call and talked with the chair. I think it was Bob Reckman at that time. And they had a problem where one of the um, people that were on the board apparently had missed many, many, many meetings. All right. That's critical, critical. No matter if you're on a board commission or whatever. I would like to suggest that when we have um, somebody applying on a board or anything that we find out, even so, if the reappointment of the mayor's office could find out, are they attending the meetings? I think that's very, very important here. And how many meetings are they given that they can miss? That's important because if you're looking at a quorum, that's very, very important. So otherwise I don't have a problem with the rest of this. Okay, thank you, Councilor Barge. So um, just to clarify, I think you were referring to a former board, uh, uh, the Board of Public Works uh, that no longer exists um, when you were uh, uh, mentioning uh, a possible reappointment. Um, but that could apply to any any reappointment to any exactly. any board in the city. Exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't have an issue with uh, reappointments, um, not not feeling a need for city services. Uh, member to uh, interview that candidate again. I guess I would to, to uh, reinforce what you suggested, Councilor Barge, is that either the mayor's office or, uh, uh, and I think it should be the mayor's office would I reach think. out would reach out to the chair of that board and ask if there have been any problems with that that member that uh, that would af affect the. Uh, uh, you know, a recommendation on reappointment. Right. And, and that, and that, that include, that could include uh, attendance. Yes. Exactly. Another two, Councillor Moulton, is that human resource. We've had prop, I mean, um, the Human Rights Commission. Yes. We've had problems. Yes. Really bad problems. And I've talked with some of the people that were on it, and they were short of quorums quite a bit. And that's serious here when you cannot continue on with your meetings without having an adequate form. Yes. And that's why we voted uh, last term to reduce the membership from nine to seven on human exactly. rights. And if if uh, 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 former Councillor Gore is, is recommended and approved, that would bring the membership up to three. So we still need, need one new one more new member to get that commission back in back uh, so it can meet yes. and it's that's a very important commission and uh, 
uh, I, I, I share uh, that concern, and I'm glad that we reduce the number of members so that it, it will be an effective board again. Right. And I also remember when um, former Councillor Karen Foster had mentioned to the mayor about looking at placing a city councillor like the Commission on Disabilities, having a city councillor also be offered to be on that. And I thought that made sense too. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll just to add to the uh, the conversation. Um, currently, the Disability Commission is, is um, we're working on um, suggesting somebody to uh, appoint to the Human Rights Commission because uh, at the mayor's request. So we haven't we haven't um, completed that yet, but soon we'll, we will be recommending someone from the I Disability Commission. I think that would be good. Yeah, me too, definitely. Yep. That's good to hear, and uh, that would then bring the, assuming that uh, 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 former Councillor Gore is uh, recommended and approved, that would bring it up to uh, four, four members uh, for the Human Rights Commission. Uh, so we, we got on to this, this discussion about reappointments as opposed to new appointments. Um, any, is there any other observations that people want to make about the uh, the reappointment process feeling that not necessary for us to can we do I'm an, so inter sorry. Do an Counselor, interview yes Councillor Milton can we take a two minute recess yes thank you two minutes we'll be back at 5 18 5 19 call it 5 19 okay <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Milton. Oh, it's just us kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Councillor Labarge. Hello. Hello. Portally, who is the president of the Ward 3 Association? That's Olivia. Olivia. Sorry, Olivia Marshall, yeah. Are they selecting another new President with more three? Every October. Oh, in October? Okay. I don't know why my lighting keeps getting darker and darker. And I have a lamp right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying. 
Jeremy, did you ever get that situation settled about um, the curb cuts and the snow on them and all that? Um, I think that's going to be more of like a, like a longer conversation about getting that, being able to improve on that, you know? Yes. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's difficult, you know, it's a different situation, you know, because like after a snowstorm, after like, you know, a week or so with these mild winters that we've been having, like it, uh, the snow melts pretty quickly. So it's like, it's like, it, it is a tough issue while it's happening, but then it goes away pretty, you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't know what exactly the answer is, but. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are all, we are all back. We're resuming, uh, city services. Yes. And um, I would like to hear just a couple of more things on that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Like we have requested in city service forever different departments to come in and talk with them about their departments, how they're doing with it, their staffing right down the line. And what we do is suggest at a meeting, anybody, any one of us on this committee can say, well, I'd like to have central service come in the director or DPW, the police department, any, any department except for school. That's it. The school department, that's left out. So that's very valuable. That way you get to know how they're doing with their staffing, the conditions, you know, talking to, to them about the snow plowing right down the line. And what we did, and it was very successful, was give our suggestions of our questions we would send them off, our chair or vice chair would send them off to the mayor, everybody on the city service committee. And then the mayor would handle it down to the director. So that director has the opportunity to see those questions and be able to answer them for us. So I just wanted a reminder on that. And it's very, very valuable. Thank you, Councilor Barge. Um that is uh, that is a process that uh, is in place uh, according to the charter, and um, I would support um, any requests that uh, city services members want to make for information uh, be handled in that in that way. That we direct them to the mayor, and uh, then the mayor uh, communicates with the relevant staff to get them to uh, 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 appear before this committee. Thank you. Any further conversation about that? Yes, Councillor Rothenberg. Thanks, and thanks, Marianne. You're I'm Councillor Labarsh. I really appreciate uh, that you guys raised this 2-7 with us about the reappointments. I think that my inclination would be that every two years, you know, we have uh, new elected sworn in, we have mm -hmm. changing economies around us. Yeah. Um, every commission that exists, exists in a unique point in time with a unique group of people. And I think that my constituents at least are really looking to the city services committee uh, to really do as full a review as we can especially so that if there are any discussions to be had, they're had here um, and fleshed out here and dealt with here as much as they can be before they go to the full council. And I think that's really our charge as city services. So I would be in favor of um, not automatically advancing the reappointments and still having an opportunity to meet those people anew. Um, you know, I, 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 I think that um, if uh, a member of city services requests that uh, an interview be done with someone who is seeking reappointment um, to a, a border commission, um, if one if one member of this committee wants to request that, then uh, I would uh, as 
as chair, I would I would honor that request. I, I don't think it needs. I guess my feeling is that we would deal with those on a, on a case by case basis. That sounds perfect. Yeah. And does that also extend to the um, recommendation that we would also deal with those on a case by case basis, not just the interview? Uh, the recommendation is always on a case by case basis. Oh, excellent. I misunderstood you then. I thought that you were um, explaining that the recommendation would automatically go to full council as positive without any review. No, for re oh, no, 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 no. Mayor excellent. actually, quarterly speaks with that reappointment, just like other appointments that we do. And then it is recommended to come as a reappointment again. I see. I she see. already interviewed them again, making sure they want to be on it, whatever. Got it. Thank you. That all sounds well and good. Thank you. Yeah, it's so it's really a question of how much information we want to gather about a particular candidate for reappointment. But no, the um, we would also we would always have a we would hear what uh, any information that the mayor's office has sent along to us as well as any information that we've decided to gather, and then we would uh, vote on a recommendation for each uh, appointee who comes before us. Yes, Councilor Rothenberg. It's maybe on a similar vein. Um, when I look at 210 about the, uh, the appointments of um, the mayor and that we can ask the mayor about the candidate and we can ask the candidate questions. I worry that we are interpreting that to mean that that is the full extent of what we can do to look into a candidate. And I think the charter really has to be read as a whole. And the charter begins with a preamble about how nothing that's enumerated in the charter is meant to limit in other words, we're not to confine ourselves to only the things that are specifically laid out as things that we may do. So I just wanted to raise that and see where you guys are on that. Um, and if that's also how you read the charter. Uh, well, I hesitate in this meeting to go beyond this particular section of the charter 2.7 because that's what's on our agenda today. Um, so I, um, I would hesitate to open a fuller sure. discussion about I, could you apply the same question to two seven? I don't have two seven in front of me, but oh, for instance, don't. does that have a couple of things that we can do? And so the question would remain, but apply it to two seven instead of two ten. Would you like me to read that? Sure. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Council well, LaBarge. What do you think? Yes, go ahead, Council LaBarge. How about if I do A and B and you do, let's say, G? How's that sound? Stan. Okay, fine. Okay, A, in general, this is the access to information on section two through seven. In general, the city council may make investigations into the affairs of the city and into the conduct and performance of any city agency. Information request number B, the city council may require a member of an appointed multiple member body or city employee appear before the city council to give any information that the city council may require in relation to the municipal services functions, powers or duties which are within the scope of responsibility of that person and not within the jurisdiction of the school committee. Okay, Stan. Okay, Mayor. The City Council may request specific information from the Mayor on any municipal matter and may request that the Mayor be present to answer written questions relating to that information at a meeting to be held not earlier than seven days from the date the Mayor receives the questions. The Mayor shall personally or through a designated City employee attend such meeting and respond to the questions. The Mayor or the person designated to attend shall not be required to answer questions relating to any other matter. Section D, notice, the city council shall give a minimum of seven days notice to a person it may require to appear before it under this section. The notice shall include specific questions 
on which the city council seeks information and no person called to appear before the city council under this section shall be required to respond to any question not relevant or related to those questions presented in advance and in writing. That's the extent of section 2.7 access to information. So I guess to answer your question, Councillor Rothenberg, I don't see much wiggle room in that section. It's pretty clear uh, about the um, process to use to request the appearance of any city employee or a member of a, of, of a body or commission, and um, that we are required to submit questions at least seven days in advance of their appearance. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. So I guess I just want to sort of leave a record just to, to give you a better idea of how I think and how I read the charter, that things that are laid out with particularity in that section 2-7, they lay out with particularity how those particular information requests would be conducted. For example, how you would ask the mayor and how you would provide notice and how long that notice must be. But for me, in my role as a counselor, is just the way that I approach the charter. I would not then limit my entire universe of knowledge about any particular topic to knowledge that I gain from those particularly enumerated means of acquiring information. So in other words, if I were to acquire it from the mayor, then I would be bound to follow those particular ways of getting information from the mayor. I agree that there's no wiggle room there. However, if I were to find information from some other source not listed in 2.7, I would not then limit myself to say, I'm not allowed to consider that information or I'm not aware of that information. I would refer to the earlier part of the charter that says nothing enumerated in this charter is meant to limit the scope of the full power of the city, which is vested in the city council. So I just wanted to clarify that. I'm not intending to argue it with you and we can interpret it differently, but I think it's helpful to understand how I think about how I read the charter and how I will be approaching my own information gathering over the long term. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Uh... Council Rothberg, and I would agree that you're not limited in terms of gathering information to these public meetings of city services or any other committee uh, on which you serve. I, I would, however, return to uh, my guidance that uh, there are boundaries to all of this and that uh, at your request, Councillor Jarrett and I, President Jarrett uh, and I met with uh, the mayor last month to discuss the possibility of city services committee members talking with uh, staff about a potential appointment as a co-worker or a, a supervisor. And um, there is no provision in the charter for uh, any city councilor to to do that, to be going out talking with uh, city employees about uh, uh, potential co-workers, uh, nor do Council President Jarrett nor I see any value in that. So while your ability to gather information is certainly not limited to these public meetings of the council or its committees, I would caution that there are some boundaries to what councilors may do. Yes, Councillor Rothenberg. I too discussed that with President Jarrett afterwards. And unfortunately, it's a very basic First Amendment right to redress of grievances that all city employees can talk to anyone in their government at any time about any issue, including about other employees. And when I discussed this with President Jarrett after your meeting, he said that he did understand that. And I think that when you point out that there is no provision in the charter about that, in my mind, that really echoes the overarching point that I'm trying to make here, which is that the charter itself says that just because something is not listed here does not mean it is not within our power. And it also says the only way our power is limited are the ways in which it is specifically designated 
-hmm. So we would agree to disagree on that. I think where President Jarrett and I left it was that we would certainly never force an employee to talk to us unless we had voted as a full council to make an investigation onto something. But certainly counselors are not limited from talking to employees. And that's a that's a labor issue if that's the message that we're sending to employees. That's not correct with the law. Yes, LaBarge. Yes. I don't know. I I think possibly if we could ask Attorney Seawald to attend our meeting. When is that scheduled again? on the 18th because we only have two appointments and I'm pretty sure that we'd be able to handle this if he cannot make it Councillor Moulton maybe we could get a statement from him for our meeting how does that sound well what 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 are you looking what kind of a statement are you looking for well the concerns that Corverly has here of what you can do and what you cannot do. If you can go ahead and talk to city employees or can you not? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure we wanna get uh, Attorney Seawald at that uh, special meeting on March 18th because I, I don't want it to run into uh, the next meeting, but um, no, it's just something that we're hearing coming from the counselor from Ward 3 quarterly. Mm -hmm. And we already know that we cannot go in and start talking to any employees about a director that we do know. Okay. I am hearing now, like all the other counselors, about what is occurring about the Prop 2.5 from the union. And they're reaching out to city councilors, reaching out. So we do have a right to talk with them and listen to them. So I'd like to get a fair square answer on this of what she is bringing forth between the charter of that language and also of section 2.7. Well, of course, uh, any city employee uh, can reach out to any city councilor uh, at, and uh, I mean that's that happens all the time so exactly um, but for us to just go into the office and talk with them about how things are going and everything I have never seen that happen usually you'll talk to a director if you have some concerns say with staffing right down the line do you need more staff? Just like the fire department. I mean, other counselors must be getting calls like yes. I am. That's what I mean here. I support your idea, Counselor Labarge, of having Seawald um, instruct us on the record in a public meeting about that. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Whenever he can make it, if he can. I do uh, agree with you also I, that it's maybe not the best for the 18th because it could be a longer discussion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, I will talk to the mayor about uh, getting uh, 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 Attorney Seawall to appear. I think it would be helpful to have that discussion rather than uh, simply seek a written opinion from him because it's unclear to me exactly what opinion that we're we're, I know. we're asking him for. So, so. The city councilor from Ward 3, Corverly, is looking at what the char charter is saying versus Section 2.7. And she brought up what she felt where her differences were in the language. So with his knowledge as our city solicitor, it would be very helpful. Okay, I will uh, make that request to the mayor to see if uh, we can schedule him uh, perhaps for our, our next- Or even the mayor come in, uh, somebody come in. Yeah. 
All right, any any further thoughts on 2.7? Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, informational. I wanted to uh, bring to everybody's attention uh, the fact that there is a, uh, the city does have a whistleblower policy in effect. And this is uh, for uh, employees who may approach you as a city councilor with information or a complaint or allegations of any nature against uh, another staff person, whether that person is a co-worker or a, uh, a supervisor. And uh, those kinds of complaints, if made to you as a counselor, your advice to that employee is to, uh, uh, to make sure that they're aware of the process that is set forward in this whistleblower policy about bringing the complaints either to their supervisor, their department head, or the director of human resources. And, um, and I think this, this policy is pretty clear about um, how those complaints are then handled and the protections afforded against retaliation. So that uh, that is in place, and should you have uh, you know occasion to be the recipient of that kind of a complaint, um, you should make sure that the the complaining employee is aware of the whistleblower policy. And I'm those, Mister Word, can you repeat? You said supervisor, department head, and what was the third one? Or the uh, the, the the the. <clears throat> the head of uh, human resources, director oh, okay. of human Thank resources. You. Okay. Does um, Cloverly have this whistleblower? That was, yeah, I, that's, that's, I, that's attached to the agenda. Okay. So, uh, I so, okay. All right, any, any questions about that? Comments, observations? Yeah. Yes, Council LaBarge. Yeah, you know, I read this very, very thoroughly. And looking at it and reading the language, it includes even city councilors, the legislative bodies in the city and in, in the state also. This is big time. And I'm wondering, like with city employees, which we are city employees because we get paid by the city, even though we're elected officials. Correct? Yes. All right, so this pertains to everybody who gets a paycheck from the city. So my question is, say with new employees or even employees, period, in the city, do you know, Councillor Moten, if they go through a training about the whistleblower protection plan? There... This is big time. Yes, there is a provision in this policy, uh, Council LaBarge, that uh, they'll do a training right? that provides for training. Uh, uh, I believe that is done by uh, by departments. Department. I yes. believe it's done done by departments. Oh, well, uh, I thought it was done by the Human Resource Department. Uh, it, the Human Resources Department is responsible for implementing the policy okay yeah. and they're responsible for making sure it's posted on the city's website so that employees have reasonable access to it and they will to the extent they consider practical provide training and education on the whistleblower policy so it would be human services staff providing that okay. training but I, I again i believe it would be done through the departments yeah Okay. Okay, but it's important to know that this policy exists. Yep. Okay. Any any further? Uh, no, I'm glad. Comments. This, I'm glad this came forth because I think it's very important. 
Well, at least this iteration of the policy is, is only about uh, six months old. It was adopted uh, last August, so. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. Any, uh, set the date, any new business? Okay. Yep. So, uh, hearing none, we will see you on March 18th for this, uh, for this committee's next meeting and, uh, at 430, uh, correct? At, at, uh, 430. And I will enter, entertain a motion to, uh, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call, Laura. Uh, Councillor Dobbs. Yes. Councillor Rothenberg. Yes. Councillor Moulton. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. All right. Thank you.